Uh, good afternoon, Datuk Vera, Dr. Haji Rais Hussein Muhammad Arif. And again, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we now, this is a most special session because, uh, Datuk Vera, for, for your information, this is the, is the only session that there is one person on a stage. That's me, because you are coming in from the virtual space. Uh, allow me just two minutes to share more about your background uh, to the rest of the audience. Dr. Wira Dr. Haji Rais Hussein is, uh, is a very known personality in the area of strategy, in the area of digital. Uh, particularly, right now, he is the chairman of Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation. Uh, Dr. Rais Hussein is an avid strategist, perennial worksmith, social engineer, serial entrepreneur, and serious policy intellectual. He is also the president and CEO of Amir Research that specializes in data-driven research on any given national and international issues. He has more than 23 years of corporate experience in leading and managing local and global telecommunication technologies and IT companies. He has been actively promoting inbound investment, technology and execution for high-tech, high-value projects in Malaysia and the exciting growth markets of ASEAN economic zone. Among the issues that fascinates him are those related to disruptive change, big data, the wide use of apps, uh, driven economy, algorithms, and artificial intelligence. So that's why it's so relevant to the whole digitalization seminar that we have today, or forum. Straddling between science, strategy, communications, and policy advice, Dr. Rice has sought to convince governments to adopt a public-private partnerships as advocated by World Bank uh, to resolve any market breakdown or conundrums. So Dr. Rice Hussein received his bachelor's in economics honors, master's in management and doctorate in business administration for the international uh, from the International Islamic University, Malaysia. Certainly, there are a lot more to introduce about uh, Dr. Wira, Dr. Rais Hussein, but I think this has given a very uh, broad uh, idea about his very rich uh, background. All right. So, Dr. Wira, uh, just quickly to share with you that, you know, with the MSc, I perhaps personally have been a great beneficiary of this uh, particular initiative. And also the company that I co-founded, uh, Red Tone, uh, is also one of the co-founding company of the MSC back then. So certainly we've been growing up uh, together. And today for this uh, purpose of the dialogue, Perhaps I would like to invite uh, Dr. Vira to just give us a, a few minutes of your thoughts and vision of uh, MDAC and MSC. And then I do have a list of questions to find out more about yourself, your inner self, hopefully, and also how our audience here can benefit from this, uh, the whole uh, post-COVID-19 situation. All right. Okay. So over to you, Dr. Wira, to share with us like a few minutes of your uh, big idea and vision about MDAC and the new uh, Digital Malaysia. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, let me first congratulate uh, uh, the Economic Club of Kuala Lumpur and KSI uh, Strategic Institute for Asia Pac for hosting. Uh, a very relevant, important dialogue uh, amidst the global search in digitalization and COVID-19. Uh, the mere fact that I'm uh, actually speaking from home 
uh, is due to the fact that I did attend some meetings uh, with the uh, minister and therefore I've been asked to uh, take it easy until uh, things are a little bit better. So it's in the greater interest of all, I decided to be uh, on a, a Zoom, uh, uh, but digitally uh, still uh, uh, deliver things that I wanted to deliver. This is the area that I've been very passionate about. I've uh, written, uh, co-wrote a book on this and I have uh, frequently writing uh, uh, on the uh, alternative media now that is the ma uh, mainstream media and also engage in many discussions with uh, various uh, strata of the society. Uh, I shall start by saying that uh, in the modern history, it is actually a landmark watershed for the governments, businesses and societies. Uh, we are facing a, a very unprecedented uh, circumstances and situation. And obviously our response cannot be and must not be uh, precedented. Uh, we know that uh, Obviously, uh, the dig dig digitization and digitalization has been the way forward of the government uh, many decades ago, as, as you rightly put the MSC and all that. Uh, I still remember when you were in Red Tone and I was in uh, Exist Technology or Nexco, we used to be a good competitor. Uh, obviously, you were either number one or number two, and I was number four. Now, things have changed quite a bit since then. Uh, the way we, we live, the way we do things, uh, it is completely uh, different. It's a, it's a sort of awakening uh, to the need of disruptive technologies. Uh, the way we are doing business is completely different. Uh, just to rehash a little bit that I said earlier that uh, the pandemic has actually accelerated or heightened society's awareness uh, on the existence of the various application of AI, blockchain, uh, robotic processes, automation, internet of things, augmented and virtual reality. Uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. In the last few months, uh, at least uh, once or twice, uh, we must have used uh, online services to buy uh, papadam and chilies and and uh, roti chana. And uh, being a mama putra myself, I, I always talk about roti chana. But uh, things are going to be more and more uh, different, and we need to be agile enough to change. The 4IR realm will make us reliant on interconnectivity, automation, machine learning, and real-time data. I always quote these uh, uh, statistics from McKinsey and Co. Uh, 600 to 800 million jobs are going to be obsolete uh, in the ne next few years uh, if we do not embrace uh, 4IR, if we do not not only embrace but act on 4IR, what we need to do. Uh, but having said that, uh, let us not uh, be the servant of the of the engines of the of the technology rather we need to uh, have a human centered approach uh, that is why i've been talking a lot about uh, society 5.0 malaysia 5.0 work in progress uh, even mdec uh, we need to reinvent uh, recently i put an op-ed op uh, on talking about how we are going to do things uh, differently in mdec mdec has been there for many years uh, have championed the cause of uh, digital economy and everything digital, uh, but things are changing so fast, so rapidly, uh, and we cannot afford to do the way that the way that we've been doing uh, or living in the comfort zone of the past. We need to change. We need to make it happen. Uh, there's going to be some big announcements from MDEC uh, towards the uh, middle of the month when there'll be a a good restructuring be announced. Uh, to reflect the current uh, reality, a current uh, 4IR landscape. And it has to be human-centered. Uh, it will be benefit for the many, not the few. So I shall stop there uh, and, uh, and let my once upon a time uh, uh, Arden competitor uh, and chairman now to, to ask the questions that he has. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Wira. And I, particularly, I take it as a compliment <laughs> to actually yeah, co-working in the same industry as you uh, some years ago. Yes. Uh, you know, we are forced into this digital era very abruptly. And first question will be something personal to you. What is the one thing about this, your experience in the digital era that excite or inspire you and why? Uh, 
Oh, you are muted. Yeah. Uh, could you unmute, please? Okay. So, can you hear me now? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, if you ask about uh, one thing that uh, that inspires uh, anyone, everyone, and what should inspire everyone, anyone, it is about survival. You look at this. Uh, when the MCO was introduced in March, uh, suddenly we are facing a very, very unprecedented uh, challenges in a very unprecedented scale in every sphere of existence. Uh, and suddenly we are put uh, and, and into a situation that we need to adapt, we need to change, and we have no choice. Now, I've been talking about this since last year uh, when, uh, uh, when my book was launched, uh, the book that I co-authored was launched in uh, uh, Frankfurt, uh, International Book Fair, and later in London, that things are going to change abruptly. Somebody asked me in the CC forum uh, in UK, in London, that uh, the decades ago like this, this decade like this, what do you think of going to be the next decade? Uh, this was in uh, October last year. And I told them uh, in that uh, gathering of about 2,500 specialists globally, uh, we cannot talk for our in terms of decades anymore uh, because it can change almost every quarter, sometimes weekly. What is so in now is going to be so out later uh, in the next uh, few days. So things are changing uh, fiercely and voraciously. That's why I keep on saying that we cannot uh, be discussing and talking without action. So it is important, like I've been, I've been MDEC uh, about 110 days now. Uh, we are uh, rocking uh, MDEC a little bit and uh, actually not a little bit, a lot, because we need to move away from the comfort of the yesteryears where things change uh, in a very slow pace. Uh, we cannot afford to have these curry puff meetings anymore. Uh, every, every, every meeting must have specific action item that tailor made to achieve a certain uh, outcome. And we do not have choice. And pandemic has just uh, accelerated the, the understanding. Remember, we are facing a, a troika of challenges. Uh, the economic, so to a certain extent, uh, to a large extent. Uh, again, this is unprecedented because never in the history of mankind uh, that uh, the lockdown is quite ubiquitous, universally, everywhere. And therefore, it impacted the economy. The second uh, thing that we are facing, again, on a very global scale, is the pandemic. Until today, we have not got any, uh, any vaccine to overcome that. And the third issue, which is a little bit more localized, and of course, to a certain extent, uh, also uh, globally, is the political uh, conundrum. So, a three potent... Uh, uh, factor that is going to impact how we uh, live in the next uh, uh, months and years to come. Henceforth, uh, we need to change. And we need to change and we need to change quickly. And uh, this is where the Malaysia 5.0 and the Society 5.0 will become uh, a guiding principle uh, to, the, uh, to how we do things in Malaysia. The good news is uh, the awareness is there uh, up to even the senior most in the government, including the Prime Minister. In fact, he chairs the National Digital uh, uh, and uh, 4 r Council, uh, which is a good sign because otherwise uh, it will get less traction and then we'll have more curry puff meetings and with no action. Wow. The one thing that is... The one thing that excites you is about survival. And then to survive, we need to change and change has to take place very fast. That calls for leadership. So my next question is about the role of leadership in this digital era. Uh, best shall we use the word digital leadership by everyone, by every organization, by every government department. So what kind of mindset, what kind of vision what kind of risk-taking kind of uh, willingness and the reward system, uh, in your opinion, can you share with us, please? Okay, uh, let me address it by saying, what if we don't do anything? Uh, what if we ignore the importance of digitalization and digitization? What if we say, 
let's same old, same old, things will be same old, same old. We will end up become digital colonies of those countries who have embarked on digital digitization and digitalization way ahead of us. And they will get everything that they uh, aspire to get and we will be left with crunch. So this is a big thing that we need to, that's a mindset uh, has to change completely. Obviously, uh, let me reaffirm that uh, MDEC uh, is going to uh, be the driving force on the, uh, the, the digital economy space and so on. But it cannot be done by just one agency. It has to be an inter-agency, intra-agency effort. I'll give you an example. I always like to give an example in explaining. Somebody, uh, this guy uh, owns a business about uh, worth about 280 million ringgit to 300 million ringgit. I met him coincidentally because I was uh, buying some furniture for my children and uh, we were having a chat. Then apparently he's the CEO of the company. So I asked him, hey boss, how come you are uh, not uh, all your retail outlets uh, in KL and PD has been closed? I have to come all the way to uh, Setia Eco Park. So why is that so? And he was saying that, look, during the MCO, the retail outlets, uh, in terms of uh, revenues, it plunged and uh, we cannot sustain anymore. And we went digital and, uh, and uh, online sales boom. And my sales now is uh, reaching 280 to 300 million. And not only Malaysia, but also in European market. I say, fantastic. So how do you do that digitally? Oh, we put our product on one of the common platform called Lazada. So some of them, the understanding of digital means putting the product on Lazada. Then I explained to him, uh, the digital economy means more than just putting a product on Lazada. And you can save more and you, you, and you can improve on the bottom line. So I actually shared with him, showed him uh, the MDEX website and he, he, he uh, apparently saw my photo there. Hey, that's you. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm working there. And uh, so the idea is what I'm trying to say is that while many people understand the benefits of digital and digitization, they may not necessarily know how to do it. Uh, why? They feel that these are all structured approach. It will be costly. You know, so there's no appropriate outreach is being uh, what we call extended to this. We have about, uh, according to SME Corp, unofficially about 1.2 million SMEs. Uh, which, uh, pro, uh, which contributes uh, more than 33, 34% to the GDP, employing 7.7 .7 million people, Malaysians. Now, if we can help them in the process of digitalization, digitization, and uh, the benefit to the, to the country will be more. Why? You suddenly, you are not, you cannot look at Malaysia only as the market. You need to see the digital ASEAN, the ASEAN as a market. If you look at 33 million population, it's not a market that uh, you should be just targeting. There's about five, 500, 600 million market in ASEAN. And do not forget Malaysia being uh, a Muslim nation, uh, we have about 2.2 billion with 57 countries that we can uh, actually tap into being uh, uh, digitally present. But what it is today, I had a very good meeting with my counterpart uh, Telecom Malaysia and we had uh, some ideas and me and inshallah uh, God willing uh, before 20th of October we will announce something very big that will help the SMEs, MSMEs and also uh, do not forget it's not just digital uh, economy for the urban but the digital economy for the uh, rural as well. Wow, we certainly look forward to the 20th of uh, the October and uh, you did kind of uh, hint to us that with this big plan, big restructuring, people will be at the center of it. And I just want to kind of point out that I, re I read a report in 2018, C uh, CNBC uh, reported that 15 companies, including Google, Apple, IBM, have uh, been hiring people or hiring professionals without degree. And in fact, uh, IBM has explicitly mentioned that they, hire, they hire people with that kind of competencies that has been developed through intensive bootcamp, let's say uh, coding bootcamp, or those 
uh, vocational uh, training. Now, how would you see the readiness of a Malaysian talent in, you know, especially have in, in coping up to build that digital competencies for a new digital era? How, how big is the gap? Of course, digital competencies is one. And to combine with also the softer part of it, right? It is competencies in the uh, language and other uh, human related uh, skills. Your comment, please. You have touched on a very, very serious and important uh, uh, factor in everything. Education is uh, core uh, and heart to uh, humans' uh, existence and survival. And how do you define education? Some people define education as degrees. Uh, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. Uh, I think uh, education is more holistic, uh, more wholesome. Uh, you did talk about the competencies that's required. Uh, you talked about uh, the coding. You talked about a lot of things. Remember, Bill Gates never graduated from the university. He may have got the honorary doctorate now, but uh, uh, he did not graduate from a university. So what I, all I'm trying to say is that the education is core to everything. The government must pay attention, must pay serious attention that uh, to recalibrating education uh, to, to, to reflect the current reality. I'll give an example, because example always uh, uh, accentuates the explanation. We have a local university, uh, we've been there for time immemorial, and they've been producing graduates. And I've been engaging to, to a certain extent in, uh, with that university before I was appointed in MDAC. And during my, uh, uh, my engagement, I found out that particular university has curriculum that has, was developed like probably 15 years ago and with a little bit of updates here and there, but not necessarily a, a major uh, updates to the curriculum. We all must remember uh, things have changed uh, dramatically. Uh, an example within an example, uh, in banks in uh, America and, 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 and in, in the UK and so on, more than 70% of employed there are no longer finance background or accounting background. They are IT professionals because with AI, with the advent of AI, with, with IoT and all that, things are being becoming very, very uh, different the way it's being operated. So this university, this particular university uh, I was engaging with, they did uh, their own forensic and study together with the Ministry of Education uh, then. And uh, they came out and said that this particular degree, bachelor's in finance or bachelor's in accounting uh, are the lowest rank among the, uh, the, 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 the degrees that they are producing in that particular school because uh, in terms of uh, employability. And I said, was. You're talking about debit credit. We are talking about fintech. You're talking about uh, assuming Islamic finance. We are talking about Islamic fintech. Things have changed so much. So really the policymakers, uh, I've uh, written about this quite a bit uh, through my MA research uh, uh, think tank entity, asking for an urgent and immediate uh, attention on recalibrating and reviewing curriculum that reflects the current reality, incorporating all the relevant 4IR. Uh, in, in the book that I co-authored with Dennis Guada, I did talk a lot about reinventing a nation and education is core. It is just time that we uh, uh, really, really solve this uh, issue of education and uh, making sure that curriculum stays relevant to the current reality. Wow. Oh. That will actually touch on multiple sectors. Now, education sector, right? Now, uh, thanks for, for highlighting that. I, I think all of us are looking forward to a very quick so-called reconnecting of the education uh, to the industry. Um, particularly you now for the industries to move forward with 4IR and digitalization. And we have been talking a lot about private sectors. I would like to switch gear to public sector. Since 1996, ever since the launch of MSC, we, we first heard of the e-government as one of the seven flagship. And then years after years, there have been a lot of initiative. My question is that, how do you rate that level of digitalization 
in the government uh, or in the public sector. And from there, how else it could be a new um, uh, locomotive uh, head to kind of drive that digitalization culture forward for our country? Interesting you use the word locomotive because in one of my op-eds, I did talk about the uh, train uh, locomotives in uh, spearheading the uh, 4IR, uh, even in a, a private or public sector. Public sector, I think Malaysia has made a lot of uh, galloping advance uh, initially uh, back then, but then uh, it took uh, quite a, a backseat because I think uh, there's not enough uh, leadership in that area. Uh, digital leadership is uh, very, very key and very important uh, going forward. Uh, we saw when the border was closed, what happened. And now, uh, I, I'll just give you an example. Uh, even for you to update uh, uh, a new ownership of a house for water, uh, you actually have to go and queue up and, uh, and, and do things. Whereas uh, Tanaga National, for instance, uh, did it online. And, uh, and everything was done online. So again, Various public sector, uh, and again, TNB may be not uh, qualified as a completely public sector, but they are serving the public. But if you look at the public sector, the civil servant, I think more can be done. Really, really more can be done. And uh, the important thing in this is that uh, there should be uh, one uh, ministry, one agency. Uh, there should be a, a greater cooperation between inter-agency and intra-agency, and even inter-ministry to really, really uh, what we call a focus on what needed to be done. Uh, are we doing that? Uh, there are many meetings, as I said, there are many, many meetings. Uh, there are many, many discussions. There, there are many, many papers. Uh, whether we are there to make it happen uh, quickly, uh, that is yet to be seen. But having said that, we all know that uh, recently uh, the uh, announcement of the council, that is the National Dig Digital and uh, FOIA Council uh, was announced. And uh, uh, in that, you'll have a, a, a congregation or aggregation of various, uh, not only experts, but also those people who are essentially uh, uh, tasked with uh, enforcing the thing. So yes, uh, we really, really uh, need to enhance and accentuate the importance of uh, digitization and di digitalization and making sure the public sector adopts it uh, and, uh, and, and make it happen. Don't forget, uh, at one time, we were on the forefront in e-government. Yes, uh, Dr. Ira. Uh, you actually call out the need for the digital leadership in the public sector. Uh, could I just draw your thoughts further on what does it take for le digital leadership to be kind of operationalized would it be in some form of KPIs, let's say a digital uh, KPIs among all the heads? Uh, would there be some kind of a digital so-called uh, adoption index that could be done for each of the public sector or department or agencies? What, what are those mechanisms that you may have in mind? As I said, uh, in Malaysia, in fact, uh, among the civil servant, even in the council and many of the interagency, intra-agency, remember I'm 110 days now in uh, MDAC. Uh, I am learning uh, sometimes to learn how to manage interagency and intra-agency is a lot tougher than managing, uh, say, uh, deploying artificial intelligence in rocket science. Uh, you understand what I'm trying to say. So, but uh, I call a spade a spade. I think there should be a speed, uh, uh, speed in uh, dealing with these things. Uh, you cannot simply, uh, uh, there should be speed, action, and impact. Uh, uh, this speed, action, and impact must be there. Uh, yes, we can discuss uh, and write voluminous of books and voluminous of minutes and all that, but the most important thing is that uh, how do we operationalize it? To do that, uh, everyone needs to understand the change is imminent, change is inevitable, and the need for change. If you do not change, what's the consequences? So having said that, I think it is a very, very important, paramount important that those policy makers and uh, decision makers uh, to take the heat uh, that 
uh, things are going to be uh, very different and it's not going to be ever the same. And, uh, and to do that, we need to act on it. It cannot be any more uh, extension of curry puff meetings. All right. Well, I think we have heard quite a number of uh, description of curry puff already. <laughs> so that is going to be the thing of the past. Uh, could we now look forward and, you know, budget for 2021 is around the corner. What do you think as a country we can look forward to in this new budget? Uh, uh, partly in digitalization, digitization, IR 4.0 adoption, and so forth. Okay, um, uh, as you know, uh, we are still facing the pandemic. The pandemic is not over, and we do not know uh, what else that will come away come our way with this uh, pandemic. Now they are talking about ten different strains of uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, we have not found even one that vaccine that can actually vaccinate us from all this. So this is uh, going to be a very testing time for all of us. Uh, the government came up with uh, the survive to restart uh, kind of uh, package. Uh, initially, it was just focused on the demand side, i.e. putting money into people's pocket. And then eventually, uh, it also addresses the supply side, uh, which is the, like the wage subsidies and, and, uh, and, and also providing some loans and soft loans for, for the SMEs to continue to survive. So this survive to restart mode, I, read, I think it will be uh, until the end of the year. Uh, as far as the 4IR is concerned, I would appeal to the government to uh, allocate uh, more uh, fundings uh, to, to, to this space, the 4IR phase, uh, phase and, uh, space and also the development of 4IR. Now, we do not want fundings that is uh, project-based. Uh, it has to be a vision-led. It has to be a mission-led. Uh, if it's a project based once the project you know this project mentality you do a project uh, you have an event management 25 people come and uh, clap and have a nice curry puff again and then after that go back nothing happens we do not want that we want to have impactful projects that will have uh, what the uh, the proverbial uh, sentence they say that uh, teach them how to fish not the fish so uh, again i'll give an example machi salma in uh, this is a real story yeah Machi Salma in Panko, for instance, uh, she has been selling uh, her Ikan Bilis Matabiru for many decades. And, uh, and what she's selling, she's selling six ringgit, seven ringgit per kilo to the uh, middleman. And uh, once it reaches the consumer, it is 18 ringgit. But Machi Salma continued to be in the vicious cycle of poverty. So we talked a lot about digital inclusion, digital divide, all big words. But what really, that is important to me is uh, how it will impact the many. So whatever budget that is to be allocated in the area of 4IR, uh, it's critical. I, I'll give you another example. Let's look at the startup ecosystem. Uh, we used to be number two to the, uh, to the, the little country down south uh, in ASEAN. That means Singapore was first, uh, Malaysia was second, then the rest of ASEAN. Today, uh, if I ask many of you, where are we at the ecosystem or startup ecosystem in the 4 hour space, uh, many will be shocked to know that we are behind Vietnam. Vietnam a few years ago were refugees in our country, but today they are ahead of us. So number one is Singapore, number two is uh, Vietnam, number three is Thailand, then comes uh, Malaysia. And I pray to God that uh, we will not end up behind Laos. So to address all these things, what do we do to do? The ecosystem, I, we all know a company called Grab. Grab started off uh, in Malaysia, did very well. They had the seed funding and uh, CIMB Bank also provided some funds. Uh, MDEC provided some funds. And later they asked for more money to, uh, from uh, our sovereign uh, Hazana. Uh, they didn't provide the money. They went to Singapore, Tomasi took over. And uh, now, uh, the, the unicorn has become a Singaporean based company. Do we want that? So we need to address uh, how the startup ecosystem is to be reconfigured. Uh, maybe we have access to seed funds. Maybe we have the series A funds, but series B funds onwards, uh, we seem not to be able to uh, do it uh, properly. 
On top of that, um, Singapore has a very targeted, uh, what we call uh, agenda of seeing what companies are doing great, good with good potential future. And then they go and say, hey, why you should come to Singapore and we will be able to fund you. Do we have such agency? We don't. So these are the things. Uh, that's why there are uh, three, four steps ahead of us. We talked about Malaysia 5.0. We want to talk about what uh, society 5.0 will look like, Malaysia style, and blah, blah, blah. We've been writing about it. Singapore last week announced as a matter of policy. You see, they're always ahead of time uh, and ahead of us. I think it's time for us, again, uh, pardon my, uh, my, my, my abrasiveness in using uh, unfairly curry puff. We have to stop these curry puff meetings and we need to have productive meetings just like what we had this morning with uh, Telecom Malaysia. Uh, I said, it was called, I mean, was chaired by the Telecom Malaysia chairman. I said very clearly, we do not want curry puff meeting. We want executable action item. And this is what we need to do at A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So wait before 20th of October, at least something new will come out and this will benefit the many, not the few. Wow. Uh, certainly, we have so much to look forward to the, uh, to the 20th of October. We are coming to almost the, at the end already. I, I think we would like to have this last question in, in this dialogue to point us to the future. Uh, a longer term future will be the next five years uh, Malaysia plan, the 12 five years plan that is supposed to be tabled uh, in the next two, three months, right? And you have shared with us that in our budget 2021, digitalization, IR 4.0 will be given stronger prominence and support there. And likewise, the startup ecosystem. That is one year in the one year horizon. In the five years horizon, what are those like major direction and strategy that has been kind of uh, envisaged in the next five years plan? Um, uh, coincidentally, I'll be attending that meeting tomorrow. <laughs> so I will have more details on it tomorrow. Uh, I'm of the view of not uh, talking too much on a big macro perspective and then uh, do nothing about it. But let me uh, just uh, attend the meeting tomorrow and get a little bit more uh, details. And uh, in every meeting, I usually participate. Uh, some like it, some don't like it. But for me, I stay the course. Uh, for us to be uh, relevant in the in the next, uh, I'm not talking about 10 years or five years, next two years, next three years, uh, we need to embrace 4R in a wholesome way and then implement 4R not on a cosmetic way. Uh, we normally, we have to stop this event management mentality and we need to start uh, doing things, uh, getting things done. So what are the things to be done in the 4R space? As I said, uh, one important area is the startup uh, ecosystem. Uh, our startup ecosystem, I think uh, you've been uh, one great champion in this era, in, in this area. Uh, you took, took it on, you took the risk, uh, you went to markets that not many people will go, and you yourself saw uh, what can happen, what, uh, what benefit can also happen. So you understand this space quite well. Uh, in the startup ecosystem, there are many opportunities. And Malaysians, we are endowed with a lot of rich talents, uh, people who have great ideas. Uh, then they may have some difficulties in going to the market. So this is where uh, uh, agencies like MDEC, rather than organizing events and events and events, we should be focused on helping this kind of people because it will have a trickle down uh, economy impact on the people. And uh, I think uh, you will see a very different MDEC going forward. Yes. Um, Dr. Wira, before we end, may I invite you to give uh, a few words of suggestion or advice to all the audience here who are from the digital industry, from the various sectors, uh, and some may also give input to the public sectors. What is your advice? My advice is uh, the only one thing that I always tell people is that please embrace 4i art. Uh, it is here to stay. Uh, there are more things that's going to happen. Uh, things are going to be completely different. This is an unprecedented times. 
we cannot uh, go back to the textbook uh, finding a precedented solution. The solutions are also going to be unprecedented. Um, if you have time, uh, please uh, get this book. Uh, and uh, I've, uh, uh, me and Denise have written quite extensively on what we think is going to be in the next uh, two, three years. Remember, I don't believe in, uh, in 10 years and all that, five years and all that, because uh, things are fast, fast evolving. Um, and we have not even touched quantum computing and quantum technologies yet. And when that comes in, uh, the, the challenges are going to be immense. So be prepared, be ready, embrace it, uh, love it, uh, act on it and get it done. Uh, yeah, sometimes you can have curry puff. Right, that was a strong words of advice uh, to get it done, get impact, get results. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, we come to the end of this 40 minutes, uh, pretty in uh, what they call that uh, insightful dialogue with you. In fact, very much packed with a lot of content. Uh, I'm sure many of us will have so much to digest. And I would like to invite everyone to join me by giving a big round of applause to our special guest, uh, Dr. Oweira, Dr. Haji Rice Hussein Mama Arif. Thank you very much, sir. I uh, hope to see you in person another time. Uh, this is Way uh, signing off from this session.